Welcome back to Mesoamerica Aslan. Today we're in Lincoln Heights. Uh, behind me, if you notice, is, uh, is another park. This park has sculptures that celebrate historical figures of Mexican history. But no other sculpture in LA is celebrated the way this sculpture is. <laughs> standing behind me. Um, Tlatuani Cuauhtémoc or Cuauhtémoc. Uh, Cuauhtémoc means descending eagle or e eagle that comes down from above. Uh, Tlatuani doesn't uh, literally mean king, although some people think that it translates to king because he, he, he was the last Aztec ruler, but it also, it, it, it's more like speaker, or first speaker. If you look carefully at the figure, you'll see that he's, he has this beautiful cape uh, a, a headdress with feathers on it, and he's holding the spear that just signifies him as, as this warrior. So when, um, when was all this happening? The, uh, the Spanish invasion or the Spanish conquest, if you want to call it that, was from 1519 to 1521. Now, in the, in, in, in the confusion of uh, the arrival of the Spanish when they captured or held hostage Moctezuma. It's not clear how he died, but he, somehow some people believe that his own, his, his own people killed him, or he might have died from a wound inflicted by the Spanish during uh, interrogation. Uh, there was this just this, this constant drive by the Europeans to figure out where more treasure and gold uh, was being kept. Um, and Moctezuma II Chocoyotzin died. Uh, and his replacement, I, I believe, was his brother, Cuitlahuac. Cuitlahuac was a well-recognized warrior, ready to lead an army uh, to battle, and had a detailed plot to take, uh, to take back his, his uh, Tenochtitlan and, and uh, to uh, uh, kill Cortes. But sadly, his reign only lasted about two months. You see, the European factor, not only did they have allies of native population, but they also had a secret weapon that they didn't know they had with them. They brought a biological warfare. It was smallpox that killed Cuitlahuac and millions of other native people in the Americas. Millions. Um, and with that death, it, it, left, uh, it left the Aztecs in a huge disadvantage. Now, in, in a scramble and a hurry to, to, to pick up the pieces, uh, skipping traditional protocol and ceremony, uh, Cuauhtémoc was elected ruler at the age of 18. Um, and he, he struggled to, to, to make an alliance with some of, his, some, some of, the, some of uh, the nations that were still allies to the Aztecs, but sadly was captured uh, when trying to leave Tenochtitlan, Mexico City, uh, captured by, by the Spanish. Uh, his family held hostage and they they released the family but kept him and he was taken all the way to Honduras and in Honduras he was tortured his feet were burned and again the interrogation for more gold and treasure um, they, 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 they accused him of trying to plot against him uh, against the uh, Cortes trying to kill him um, and and in that, in that in that moment he was assassinated somewhere in 1525 so with the death of Cuauhtémoc, um, well, with his birth and death, marks a very important turning point for Mesoamerican history. The, the cultures of Mesoamerica for years have, have built these dynasties with elaborate cities and, and very similar, almost identical religious social structures. And the thing is that with the death of Cuauhtémoc and the arrival of the Europeans, now you have this dramatic transition, this, this, this change that, that disrupts a 3,000 year old historical continuity. Um, and the introduction of 300 years of, of, uh, of colonization by the Spanish. Um, but, you know, let it be known that, that he is, he's remembered and his courage is remembered and, and celebrated like no other uh, historical figure in, in, uh, in Mexico or in Mesoamerican history. So how exactly is he celebrated? How is he remembered? 
Well, we have to come back on a different day so that I can show you. We're back, but this time it's February 28th, 2009, and we're standing in front of the Cuauhtémoc statue again. But what's really amazing is that I have hundreds of dancers here, all together, ceremoniously honoring the memory of Cuauhtémoc, his birth and his death, and his contributions to the, to the culture of ancient Mexico. Okay, today I have Jaime Ayala here with me, one of the dancers that's participating in the ceremony. Uh, Jaime Ayala, ¿me puedes decir un poco, un poquito sobre la ceremonia y qué, qué es lo que están haciendo aquí? Bueno, básicamente se está recordando vida y muerte del de último Tlatuani de, de México, que fue el, nuestro señor Cuauhtémoc. Para nosotros es un orgullo tener que revivir estas enseñanzas que él se dejó, porque uno de, de sus más grandes este, mandatos fue de que nuestras casas iban a ser los teocalis y más que nada las escuelas de nuestras familias. Y creo yo que en la danza azteca, como en otras tradiciones, lo hemos preservado, ya que yo soy la cuarta generación que estamos llevando la danza azteca tradicional. Y para mí es un gusto tremendo estar en ese tipo de eventos, porque veo la juventud, cómo está creciendo, y gente que ya estamos este, de años en esto, pues dándonos la mano y más que nada conviviendo, que es para lo que es esto, este, la danza, unirnos. Y pues, ¿qué te puedo decir? Para mí es algo grande, es algo grande porque es algo comunitario, y más que nada pues social, porque aquí se rompe géneros. Puedes agarrar desde un traba, simple trabajador, obrero, hasta un profesionista, un doctor, sabes, aquí se rompe, aquí no hay títulos, aquí todos somos personas, somos seres humanos y danzantes. Órale, muchas gracias Jaime, gracias. un placer. I'm standing here with Chuy Ortiz, and you're from Sacramento, Sacramento. right? Sacramento. And um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about like how long you've been participating with the ceremony, or how long this has been happening here, and, and what everybody's doing here. Well, the way I understand it, first of all, este, I believe this is the 29th, 30th annual, and it was probably back then when Florencio Yescas, may he rest in peace, departed and left us this dance, left us this ceremony to continue for unity and harmony and for strength and uh, to honor our, 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 uh, our veterans, to honor our ancestors, to honor all the men. This is kind of like a, a more male, but then without a female there's no male, so this is for harmony, this is for our families and this is for growth and continuation, honoring the past, the present, the future. I believe this is for a lot of things. Uh, whatever's going on in our lives, wherever we're weak, wherever we're sad, to strengthen us. It's not just a dance, it's not just movement, it's not just brumas, but, a, but rather a prayer from the heart. And, uh, and, it's, and it's approached in, in that prayer way, as with the velacion, uh, honoring the ones before us and preparing for today, for this prayer, for this beautiful prayer. Honoring fallen soldiers, and family people, and, you know, uh, como decía Florencio Yescas, para seguir adelante.